Don't miss chances to buy gifts for loved ones at the lowest prices. There will soon be mega sales at the Banggood store. Black Friday, Cyber Monday and Christmas deals wait you. Huge amount of coupons and gifts. The link is in the description. Hi friends, today we are talking about the simplest pulse power supply which can be successfully repeated by a beginner. The power supply is reliable, works in a wide range of supply voltages and has compact dimensions. It has a relatively low power, about 2 watts, but it literally can't be killed. It isn't afraid of even long-term short circuits. The power can be slightly increased, but we will talk about this a little later. The simplest industrial switching power supply is as follows. This is regular charging of old mobile phones. Our circuit is simpler, although the principle of operation is the same. So about the circuit. This is a low power switching power supply of an auto generator type, has only one transistor. At the input of the circuit, a current limiter is installed. It is resistor R1. Then through a half wave rectifier, the voltage is applied to the generator circuit. The pulse transformer has three windings, a collector or primary winding, a base winding and a secondary winding. The circuit has no stabilization of the output voltage and protection against short circuits. Maybe it's looking strange, but this circuit is not afraid of short circuits. In the case of short circuits, the current in the primary circuit naturally increases. But it is limited by the previously mentioned resistor, and all the excess is dissipated on the resistor in the form of heat. So, the unit can have short circuit even for a long time. Such a solution naturally reduces the efficiency of the power supply as a whole, but it makes it literally non-destructive, unlike the chargers for mobile phones. A power transistor is a low-power, high-voltage bipolar transistor of reverse conductivity, like MJE13001, 13003, 13005. More powerful ones don't make sense, the first option is enough. As a rectifier, a pulse diode is installed at the output of the circuit. I recommend using a Schottky diode to reduce losses. One ampere diode is sufficient. Further, nothing special. The filtering capacitor, the LED indicator, and a pair of resistors. An important point is the winding of the transformer. On the printed circuit board and on the diagram, the beginnings of the windings are indicated, so no problems will arise. Initially, the primary winding is wound, which consists of 200 turns. The wire diameter is from 0.08 to 0.1 mm. Then the insulation is placed and the same diameter wire is using for the base winding, which contains of 5 to 10 turns. Then we make the output winding. The number of its turns depends on what voltage you need. I think it will be 1 volt per turn. Where you can get the core for winding? There are a lot of options. Non-working power supplies from mobile phones, LED drivers and other low power supplies are usually built on the basis of single cycle circuits, which include the required transformer. I didn't make any calculations and the number of turns of the windings was borrowed from the transformer for charging cell phones. The circuit is almost the same, the number of windings too. Pay attention that it is a single cycle unit and there must be a non-magnetic gap between the core halves. Such a gap is present in the cores of cell phone chargers. The gap is a relatively small, half a millimeter is sufficient. If you don't find the transformers with a gap, then it can be made artificially by placing one layer of office paper between the halves of the core. The finished transformer is collected. The halves of the core are pulled together by an adhesive tape or glued together with superglue. About the drawbacks of the circuit. The limiting resistor at the input reduces the efficiency. Not much, but reduces. In turn, it guarantees the safe operation of the unit. Second is limited power output. In order to build a power supply on this basis, say for 10 to 20 watt, you need to reduce resistance and increase power, so that the heating doesn't go beyond. This is inconvenient and increases the size of the power supply as a whole. But, on the other hand, similar circuits are used where the power is required within 3 to 5 watts. For example, in my case, the unit is designed to power a small cooler, 
Therefore, power is limited within 2 watts. There are many areas of application, since the unit has a galvanic isolation from the AC network and therefore it is safe. It is an excellent option for powering LEDs, cooling fans and powering some low power circuits. Friends, a complete archive with a circuit and a printed circuit board will be found in the description. There are also links to purchase components for assembly and ready low power power supplies of a similar type. If you like this video, please rate it, subscribe to the channel to keep abreast of developments. Don't forget to subscribe to my group in Facebook, the link is under the description. Now I say goodbye, until new meetings, with you was Kassian TV.